Rajul, what needs to happen in development finance in particular to have impact on the ground? One, more development finance. Two, more focused development finance so that it focuses on the priorities where we can have bigger bang for the buck. Three, to invest in resilience itself. I think we are under investing in resilience. We live in a world of shocks, more shocks, different shocks, unexpected shocks, and to be prepared to invest in tackling some of the shocks at shorter notice and more imaginative programming and more, more comprehensive programming. A primary driver for investment is a high rate of return. How do you make sure that investment is going into directions that you feel are important? I think very important is to figure out where to prioritize your funding. And for that, it also requires some work in terms of assessing what is the returns to your funding, what is the impact of the funding that you do. Um, but it also, even more importantly, you need to look back what exactly are you trying to achieve? Short term, medium term, long term, societal good, immediate impact, what problem are you trying to solve? What's the best way of tackling that problem? Who needs to be involved? With whom do you get engaged? And then make the appropriate investment and then stick to the investment. You know, don't let it be, be driven by a fashion. Sometimes you need to persevere at a problem and go in at scale. If you want to have impact at scale, invest at scale. Climate change and other development decisions actually need big societal decisions to move big amounts of money into the right direction. Can you see something like that coming in development countries right now? If we're looking to build resilience, we have to ask ourselves resilience to what shocks. And so we need to understand better what are the shocks coming down the road so you design your instrument accordingly. When I look at the developing world, I can see major shocks in terms of food price volatility, which requires investing in agricultural productivity and also uh, agricultural resilience to stresses like climate change and so forth. But then another important shock that is coming down the road is a health shock, because a health shock topples people into poverty and keeps them there. You also have to look at shocks related to conflict and displacement. 1.5 billion people live in conflict or conflict-prone areas. How do you find ways to handle that? But come back, you know, it's easy to invest in infrastructure. Um, that is important, no doubt. But one also has to invest not just hard infrastructure, but social infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, whose resilience are you trying to build up? People and communities. And so you have to invest also in the systems at the community level, social infrastructure, education, health, social protection, if you want to break the cycle of disaster after disaster, respond to a disaster, next disaster, next disaster. We want to make people and communities resilient. Take a step back, see what will help people be resilient, and then make the relevant investment, which will depend on the location you're in and the time you're in. Sometimes it seems as if the world is pretending that the ultimate climate shock is never going to come. Why do you think that is? I do not agree with you that people are pretending uh, that the, there's no climate change. A lot of people are very aware of, very concerned about, they're experiencing climate change. I think it is some governments that need to change, not necessarily people. Uh, but I think there needs to be re greater recognition and greater investment and different investment that is needed. But as to the people are aware, especially people right in the rural areas, people in the areas that are experiencing the climate change or the consequences of climate change are very well aware and they're doing you know, what they can do, but they cannot do any, everything on their own. And that's why it is very important that governments make the necessary investments. I think the COP21 is going to be a very important opportunity uh, for people to basically scale up the investments they're making. But they are making the investments. China, India, uh, I wish India was doing a little bit more, but I mean, people are recognizing that there's need. But as to whether we are making the programming decisions, whether we're making the policy decisions, the enabling environment to support the actions that people in the front line are taking, that's, I think, the real, real challenge. But, but people are aware. Thank you. Thank you.